Does the thought of not having enough money to last the rest of your life keep you up at night? When you hear the term financial future, do you immediately stick your head into the sand? And did you actually think you had it all under control until you found out that you didn't? Welcome to No Two Gays About It, the show for the over 50 gay male, all about things that are important to over 50 gay men, and hosted by... That's right, two men who are gay who are over 50. Hi, I'm Tom Burke. And I'm Michael Foley. And today we are going to tackle a subject that is really important to those of us mature gay men. Money and our future. Last season, we did a show that asked the question, are you all ready for what's coming next? And the overwhelming response we got from all of you was basically... No. Hell no. Not just no. Hell no. Especially when it comes to money. So true. And uh, we got so many comments regarding retirement and our futures that we just felt like we had to take this topic on again. Um, And we're going to be touching on some of those comments that you guys sent us during this episode. We also got one email from a friend and supporter of our show, Kirk Bremer, who is a financial advisor with the Maverick Wealth Group. Kirk and his husband listened to our show uh, together in Colorado, and he wrote us this email saying, wow, you guys, this is a really important topic, and mainly because... Of all the moving parts that have to do with finance and our future, so many gay men are just not kind of prepared for that. In fact, Kirk says that he focuses on behavioral finance, which I think is actually brilliant because, as you all know, there are so many feelings and emotions that kind of come to play when we talk about money or future or planning for our money and our future. Um, So Kirk, who knows far more than Michael and I could ever, has been dealing with guys like us for his entire career. So I gave him a call and I asked him all kinds of questions and he gave me all kinds of really important information that we're also going to be sharing throughout the rest of our show. But before we continue, let me just reach out to those folks who are watching us on YouTube. Do not forget to click like and subscribe and ring that little bell if you want notifications when a new video drops. Yes, please do. All right. So apparently a huge portion of our over 50 gay population is not financially prepared for the future. And the big question is why? So what we're going to do is we're going to go through some of the comments, as Michael said, that you guys sent us, and we're going to try to figure it all out. All right. Ready, Michael? Let's do it. But before we start, I just do want to point out, you mentioned behavioral, what was that? Finance. Finances, which is something that actually rang true for me because, you know, as someone who has gone to the gym regularly his entire life, it made so much sense that we have to modify our behavior. In relationship to finances. Yeah. Again, there are just so many feelings, behaviors, emotions, all tied to money. And we have got to kind of work through that and or find a guy like Kirk who understands that and can help us work through that. All right, let's go. So here's one of the comments we got. Life always throws a curveball, so you can't always be completely ready. Amen to that. Right? (laughs) Especially, you know, at our age. A medical expense is a huge curveball, right? Okay. But this guy goes on to say, even when you've planned ahead, you don't know what's happening. So basically, why bother? Hmm. Why bother? Because you don't want to be in a situation where you or find yourself all of a sudden underwater. Um, that yeah. Making some plan is better than having no plan. I totally agree with that. All right. Let's keep reading these guys. Uh Being a single gay man, I found it difficult to prepare for the future because I am not married and I have no children. So why did I have to? Yeah, I I can relate to that one a little bit, being a single gay man. Um, I, you know, for me, it's, it's, if if I'm married and I have responsibility to someone else or something else, I think I would think differently on finances. So I, I kind of understand that take. Yeah, but... I mean, why do you want to leave all your stuff to the government? You know, you, you've got to make a plan for everything. How but, are you going to support yourself? And then what happens to all your stuff when you're gone? Right. You know, you do have to make a plan. All right. Here's another one. 
Uh, all my gay friends keep waiting for someone to step in and take care of them. And that's not a particularly solid plan, in my opinion. So do you yeah. think that that comment is in reference to, like, I want to put it bluntly, sugar daddy? Like someone to step in and... No, I think with, that's, I, that's, that's kind one of, of the... answering... It's kind of answering the first two quotes that we got already about why bother? I'm not going to do it. I don't have to. Well, what are you waiting for? Someone to come in and take care of you? No, you've got to do that. You yeah. know, um, I think especially at our age, <laughs> we are not going to find a sugar daddy. unless Yeah, the, the prince on the white horse, I think, got lost in another county. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of up to us, right? <laughs> that white horse is now a wheelchair or a walker. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, all right. So let's keep going. Uh, oh, this is great. Uh, we are so lucky in the UK when it comes to free health care. No kidding. Seriously. Which is great because the very next quote I put down is this one. One of the biggest surprises for me when I retired was that Medicare is not free. Yeah. That, and, you know, as someone who's not eligible for Medicare yet, um, one of my biggest monthly expenses is health insurance. Yeah. It's oh. over a thousand dollars a month is what my premium is. Dude, I'm out. paying fifteen hundred a month ever since my husband retired and I was on his uh insurance. Yeah. It was like, oh, now I gotta get my own because yeah. I, you know, have my own business. So yeah, fifteen hundred bucks a month is huge. That's, that's and, you know, uh, probably three quarters of your rent. If you're a single gay guy living on his own, that's that's, yeah. a, that's a huge ding. It 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 is huge. But as our last quote said, you know, you can wait till you get Medicare, but you're still not getting it free. You've right. got to pay. Uh, which I think a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. You know? This next one too, I don't think a lot of people understand this one. Who knew that social security is taxed? Up until recently, I did not. <laughs> well, you it know? depends on what state you're living in. Yeah. A lot of states don't tax Social Security. Um, but then it also depends if you're making money, you have so much that you can make. And then right. once you start making too much, then they start uh, taxing Social Security. It's it's so overwhelming, all of this. I totally understand why so many guys are just like, I don't understand, which is why I think we all need to seek some help with and it somebody. Is, it is overwhelming. So, you know, a lot of us folks are the quintessential procrastinator where it's like, yeah. oh, I'll worry about it tomorrow. And then all of a sudden tomorrow's today and you're like, oh my God, fuck. Oh, oh, that's so great because I have a quote that is just like that. Listen to this. Why do gay guys not prepare for the future of being old? Because they think the summer will never end. And then it does. And then they're shocked and surprised. <laughs> you and you're really sunburned so <laughs> well no you just can't keep stuff. procrastinating no. because eventually yeah summer's over and know? i know we have uh, some younger guys out there who are listening to us so please take the time now um you know take this as a cautionary tale do some research now so you're prepared in the future no kidding yeah. uh okay here's another one great uh it's really hard to think about 20 years from now when you're a couple checks away from the street I honestly don't know how people cope in those situations. And so I don't. I just don't think about it. Probably not the best route. But again, I understand that because it, it is overwhelming. And sometimes ignoring is the best, you know, it's where sometimes can be the queen of the not denials, right? Um, where if you pretend it's not there, it's, you, you know, you don't have to deal with it in the moment. And that's never a good thing because the moment, again, is going to come where you're going to have to. And it's coming quicker than we think. So, you quick. know, so we quick. are at a point now where you got to stop, pull your hand, head out of the sand and yeah. face all this stuff. I mean, it genuinely this feels one... like it was a blink of an eye from 50 to 60, right? Yeah. It's nuts how fast it goes. Because we have to remember, we're careening downhill now. We've hit the top and we're on the way down. So it goes quick. Well, that's a lovely thought. <laughs> um, all right. This is a one that I think a lot of people might understand, especially those guys who we've all been through a lot of uh, the same things together. All right. I made it through the hell of the AIDS crisis. I saw that there were no guarantees for a future. 
So I spent my life being selfish, doing what I want, when I want, without making or thinking or planning about my future. And here I am, now in my future, unprepared, and have no clue how I'm going to live. Yeah. That's, that's a big one for our generation. Because again, you know, we were taught tomorrow also may not come. Um, so, you know, I, I, I understand that. I understood that in the 80s and even the 90s. But that was a long time ago. And I think that that thinking of like, oh, there are no guarantees. Nobody has guarantees, you know, but this was one of those things that was really in our faces, though, up until the late aughts when they came out with the new antivirals. So, you know, it was a mindset for all almost 30 years of our lives that, and we were watching young friends pass. Right. So I get that mentality. I really do. Um, but he, I, I think this guy said it, you know, perfectly. Okay. I understand the mentality, but then he says, I spent my life being selfish, doing what I want when I want without thinking or planning about my future. I think that's the biggest thing that, for all these guys who are saying like, well, I didn't think about it. I don't care. Why should I? That's kind of a selfish thing. You know, aren't you putting it on to somebody else in some way? Somehow someone's going to have to take care of you, you know? It's yes? Right. No? Um, to, to a degree, I will agree with you, but I also will disagree with you. Because again, you know, you've been in a great situation where you're married and you have someone else there as a safety net, you both have that. People in relationships have that. For single guys, there is definitely a different mentality, I think, when it comes to financial responsibility and planning. Um, yeah, but I would think, though, if you were single, then it onus is on you. Without like, a you doubt. Really, you have doubt. to be put in the work. Like I made sure before I even met my husband, I was making sure that my future was going to be set. I I was working my ass off and saving and planning and investing. And so I, yes, I understand that, yeah, you've got another person, but also you have to look at it like, yeah, I've got another person that I've got to also pay for. You know, it's not just well, you, one. You have, you have two working toward, toward a goal as opposed to one. And, you know, being financially um, responsible for yourself and everything that comes along with that yeah. is, over, is overwhelming, you know, as opposed to making a plan with somebody else. Um, and again, trust me when I tell you, I'm in a situation I never thought I would be in. And like I said, I can relate as a single man, not saying it's right or wrong, but we are where we are right now. And we do better when we know better. And hopefully that's what this show is going to do for some people is to, here's where we are. How do we step forward and start taking care of it now and right. dealing with the circumstances we are in now? Can't go back. I can't go back to the 90s and buy property in LA when it was, you know, sure, a penny an acre. <laughs> you can't yeah, do that. No, I wish we so all could. Right? We have to approach it as we are now and move forward with a plan. And that's what this is supposed to be about, making a plan now, regardless of what our past experience was right. or is. Yeah, right. well, no, definitely. I mean, but but we also have to kind of step back and look and be like, why didn't you guys think about this? Why didn't you? Why wasn't this at the forefront? Or is it go back to what this guy said that we prefer just to be selfish and just think about having fun for the moment? I, and I don't now... think selfishness comes into the the, the the equation for a lot of us. Um, okay, you know, to, because you know, I loved to travel. Um, and I don't consider that selfish. I consider that me giving myself experiences. Um, so was it selfish? No, I don't have a single regret for any of the travel that I did. And again, it's one of those situations where we have to, you can't look back with regret. Again, we are where we are. And what happens from this moment on, once we have that knowledge, is what matters. You can't look back with regret and say, I should have done this. I should have done that because then you're beating yourself up. And that's the worst possible thing you could do because that leads to you sticking your head in the sand because all of it's overwhelming. So right. again, all of you guys out there who didn't really have a plan like me, 
now's the time to start planning and don't beat yourself up for things you did in the past because you can't go back and take it back. Right. Yeah. But you also don't want to, you can't plan for your future by looking back. You no. You have to keep looking forward, right? right. And That's where right. you are. And this moment on from where we stand in yeah. this moment, where we are financially. Yeah. And take it from now and start looking into the future. Do not look I, back. Do not look back. I think one of the biggest things is that because it is so overwhelming and this isn't my world, it's not your world, financial world, you know, um, I think we do need to admit that we need help, which is a big step for a lot of people. Absolutely. In fact, in talking to Kirk, he said that was one of the things that kept gay guys from talking to somebody was the fear of judgment and not just judgment of, oh my God, I, I don't have anything in place, but the judgment of like, you know, we, we all know this feeling of like, yes, I, I'm gay. I have a husband. I have a partner. I, you know, having to do all that explanation kind of crap that like, I don't want to talk to anybody and have to explain that I'm gay and whatever, you know? So as he said, that, that has kept a lot of people, uh, that judgment, fear of that judgment, but also the fear of the judgment of like, I didn't do anything. I didn't plan, but now I want to at this age. That's exactly what I wanted to point out. That's the absolute worst possible judgment. And the thing we fear most is the self-judgment. Besides all of the guys out there who did not prepare, there is a large portion of gay men over 50 who are completely prepared financially and are set for the rest of their lives, which is awesome. It is awesome. But then there's this other group who, and I'm afraid I fall into this group, who thought they were prepared and then found out that they really weren't. And it's funny, in my conversation with our financial advisor, Kirk Bremer, I was like, oh, I guess maybe I'm not all prepared as I thought I was. Uh, so give us an example of that not preparedness. Well, I'm going to take you with uh, Kirk and his company, Maverick Wealth Group. They put together these five plans that everybody has to have in place. And it was when he was talking to me about these five plans, when he hit on one of them, that I was like, oh, yeah, I don't got that one. So let me take you through all five of them so all of you guys out there can understand um, the five plans that we need to have in place, according to the Maverick Investment Group. First one is income plan. You got to know how you're going to live, right? What sources of income do you have? Obviously, most of us are going to get some sort of social security, but as we all know, that ain't going to be enough. So. No. You know, what else are we going to do? What is our plan? Uh, a part-time job? A lot of guys over 50, over 60, over 70, even 80-year-old guys are, you know, working part-time jobs because they need to. Um, passive income. A lot of people have some rental uh, properties that brings in uh, some passive income. Uh, and this was one that I kind of found very funny when I was reading up on income that people our age and older are now looking towards only fans apparently seriously, i've seriously had a number of people talk to me about that they're like you should start an only fans page and oh I'm my like, god if anyone you know knows how i can do that please let yeah. me know um <laughs> because as like i was reading, i was reading about it and so many older men are making a fortune on only fans um so, yeah, I mean, I guess you got to do what you got to do, right? Uh, yeah. You want to be a Walmart greeter? You want to sell pictures of your feet? Whatever yeah. works for you. You know what I mean? Um, and here's something to take into consideration with the income aspect. Yes. Um, I don't think any of us expected prices to be what they are. We're, you know, we're making the same income, and yet we're paying probably 30 to 40% more to live our life exactly like we were living. Right. And I don't think this situation and this sort of discrepancy has happened in our lifetimes. I know during the 80s, the 90s, the aughts, like I made good money and I lived a very reasonable life. Um, but now that reasonable life is at risk, even though I am making the same money. And that's a whole nother level of stress. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, that goes into your income plan. You've got to plan for the fact that prices are going to keep going up. And how are you going to, how are all of us going to meet those uh, rising costs? All right. Second plan that we have to have in place is our investment plan. So many retirees are going to live off all of their investments, which I'm one of those guys. But there's a lot of things that we have to think about. Um, number one is taxes. Even though you have all these investments, I know we all get killed with taxes. And this year has been so great with the market. All of you, you know, who are, in, who are in it know, no matter what the Republicans are saying, we're making a fortune, which means capital gains taxes next year are going to be humongous as well. And so you've got to plan for that because how am I going to pay these huge tax plan t tax bills that I'm getting? Um, not only that, but taxes for everything. If you own property, you've got property taxes that are going to keep going up. Right. Taxes for everything are going to keep going up. And then also about the plan for investment, you know, there's that aggressive investing and when you should stop ag aggressively investing and blah, 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 all that kind of investment mumbo jumbo that I just don't understand. Again, this is when you need help. And the kicker to this, Michael, is that I grew up with a very big investment banker dad. He was one of the first guys they developed. There was eight of them. They whatever it doesn't matter. But um, I should have paid more attention. You know, mm -hmm. he was constantly talking, telling us stuff, and I was like, la 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 la. Can I have a new car? You know, like I. Well, again, that you know what, and this this is, I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. Let's take shoulda out of the equation and our own conversations with ourselves because we are where we are. So right. the great thing now is you're concerning yourself with it, right? You're still not pretending. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I did do a lot more work on this when I was younger, which is great. And I do remember those some things that my father said, like compound interest. I know how important that is. And you're in it for the long hauls. You can't, you know, watch the market daily and all, you know, all those kind of things. Yeah. But I, I do kind of miss him in a way that I can't call him up and go like, hey, right. You know, uh, which is why it's important to find somebody who who you can trust, who can, yeah. you can feel comfortable with to talk about. Um, and the biggest thing about investments uh, planning is the big question I asked at the big top of our show. And this is something that runs through my head all the time is how long is your money going to last you? You know, I I I know I talk to friends and we're all doing that computer in our head of like, Okay, I'm 63 now. How long am I going to live? Okay, 25 more years. And how much do, you know, my monthly expenses and all of that stuff, creating those budgets constantly going through my head. Um, but it's it's got to be done. You've got to have that plan. All right, next plan that's important is the estate plan. Even if you don't have family, even if you don't have kids, you got to make a plan with what's going to happen with your stuff. Yeah. You know? I mean, even if you donate it, let's say you have, you know, you have no one in your life except friends and, right. you know, your acquaintance, close acquaintances, put together a will, make sure you're clear who gets what, or if you want, just donate everything to a charity like Habitat for Humanity right. or any of the other organizations that, you know, would be grateful to receive that sort of tithing from an individual. So right. it, it is important because, you know, the worst thing I think any of us want to imagine is all of our shit sitting out by a dumpster at some point because they just wanted to get rid of it, right? Yeah, it's like either, and then what happens to all your money and stuff? Well, that's just going to uh, go to the government. So is that what you want to do? Is that what you worked your life for? You know, yeah. make sure that you do get these uh, plans. Next big plan, we talked a little bit about this for, e it, this involves everything, is the tax plan. Taxes are so freaking confusing. I mean, even when we're young and working, they're confusing. But as we're older and not working and it, you know, is Social Security, is that getting taxed in my state? How much can I make before it starts taxing that? You know, just a lot of issues that we've got to kind of get into our tax plan. Again, property taxes, taxes on our, even our vehicle taxes keep going up and we have to have those plans um, for the future. Yeah, like this year, my vehicle registration almost doubled for some strange reason. Wow. And it's the same vehicle I've had for the last five years. Crazy. It's like, 
what the hell? You yeah. know, it's not like it's 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 a more expensive vehicle now, five years later. And it, right. I, I, when I got that bill, I was like, what the hell? What? But, why? You know, Did you, do you find out why? It, I guess in the state of California, for some reason, they spiked the registration fees on vehicles. Wow. You know, when I drive a pickup truck, so in the state of California, it's automatically considered a commercial vehicle, oh. which I did not know living on the East Coast because I've had a pickup truck since the 80s. And you got to choose commercial or private. But in California, it's a whole different ball of wax. And again, so it was a little shocking to me when I got my registration bill this year. And seriously, it was probably about 40% higher than it was the previous year for the same yeah. vehicle. Yeah. Wow. Again, this is why we need to have these plans, right. these five important plans. And now this fifth one, this is where I was like, oh, yeah, I don't know if I have this kind of figured out yet. It's the insurance plan. This, too, is a little bit overwhelming. There's life insurance, although, you know, do we really need it at this age? Yeah. Um, this was something that I didn't think about. Kirk was talking about uh, that long-term care insurance. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard about that. And, you know, whatever. It's really expensive. And I, sh sorry, Michael, I should have, could have, would have gotten it a lot <laughs> younger, maybe. But now, I don't know. But Kirk was explaining to me um, about his own personal life. His husband is older than he is. And so, you know, the plan is that he's probably going to, you know, the outlive the husband. So he's going to be taking care of the husband at the end of his life. And then who takes care of him? And while he was saying that, I was like, oh, yeah. You know, I I am in a, a marriage, so one of us is going to leave first. Um, funny, again, this is funny. My parents thought, because my father was older than my mother and everything, they transferred everything into her name. They got it all ready for her. And then she drops dead. And so like, it doesn't, you can plan all you want. I was just going to say, best laid plans. Right? It goes back to yep. that very first quote. You yep. just never know because life is going to throw you a curveball, but you need to have that some sort of plan. So not only for those of us in um, uh, relationships, like, ooh, one of us is going to outlive the other, and then who's going to take care of us? This is important for you and all these single men out there. What's going to happen to you? Who's going to take care of you? Is there any sort of long do you guys need long-term insurance for yourselves, you know? And I'm assuming this is just an insurance policy that if you become incapacitated, kicks in. Is that correct? I'm I'm not exactly sure if it's just okay. that, but it could be any kind of thing, like any sort of long-term care. Maybe you need nursing care or whatever. Yeah, that's what, what judging by the name, and because I'm not familiar with it, yeah. it sounds like it is. If you become incapacitated, your insurance kicks in, right? It, it, it if it, if it is what it sounds like it is, then it, you're right. It makes really good sense for those of us who are single yeah. to look into something like that. Because I know no one's going to be running to me to change my diaper. You know what I mean? Like, we do have to kind of start thinking about that future, right. what's going to happen. Um, yeah. Like, let's say one of you guys, you know, something happens in your relationship. One of you becomes incapacitated. It would be great to have, again, I'm assuming an insurance policy that covers in-home health care. Because let's be real, it's not going to be most of the insurance that we carry now. But I know mine doesn't provide for an in-care right. nurse. And it's funny because um, I saw this with my mother-in-law. We kept her in her home and we had 24-hour uh, care that came in to take care of her for years. Um, and so when we were moving into this home, I was making sure that I had that space for that caregiver, you know, that there was an extra bedroom with an ensuite that the caregiver could live in. You know, it's weird to, to have to think about that kind of stuff, but, yeah. you know, I was planning ahead. Back to the insurance plan, other insurances that we have to keep in our plan are, you know, the homeowner's insurance, our car insurance, fire, flood, whatever kind of insurance is. And as you were saying earlier, these things are all going to keep going up. So right. we have to plan for those rises in those insurance premiums as well. Um, and it may, it may go up one year, you know, like my registration did by 40%, where in most years, you know, there's going to be a bit of an increase, maybe five, maybe 10%, but the 40% was a big boom. Right. It's like, what the hell? And if you are indeed living on a fixed income, as so many retirees are, um, 
that 40% bump yeah. could mean a real lot, you yeah. know? My so, health my health insurance goes up almost $300 starting in January. Mine too. What is with yeah. that? You know? And again, that's something we didn't expect because it's right. not been that much. It's sort of, you know, it's been a it's been a definite incremental increase every year by maybe again five ten percent right but next year we're up at about 30 percent, and it's like what the fuck? right wow all right so back to our plans that we have to have in order you know those are the income plan the investment plan the estate plan the tax plan and the insurance plan so not only do you have to have you know make your money and all that stuff but there are all of these things that have to be considered and as i said when i was talking to kirk i was like "Ooh." Yeah, I don't know if I have all these things together. So certainly got my mind to kind of focus in on where I'm lacking. Yeah, I think I got to get Kirk's number from you because <laughs> well, definitely I'm in desperate need of help. I, I'm going to suggest that everyone talk to Kirk, especially gay guys, because as I said, there there's none of that you know, hey, hi, I'm gay and I, you know, he gets or if you're, in a, if you're in a same sex marriage, you know, you might go yeah. to a financial advisor who gets really it. doesn't care for your particular type of relationship. Right. So it is good to find someone within the community who, who, who gets, gets it. it. Yeah. And, and he, needs. he definitely does because he's, he's yeah. one of them. Oh, we got another email from another really great friend and supporter of our show, Ted Zalewski. Um he wrote about a friend of his that passed, unfortunately, but as he was saying that his friend did do all of the work, he had all his ducks in a row, he had everything planned and secured and, you know, everything was where it was supposed to be, except one thing, he forgot to give whoever was in charge of all of this stuff, the passwords. So they couldn't right. get to any of this stuff. And the I was like, remarkable is that you forget to dot one eye, right? And everything falls, everything you've planned just crumbles to the ground, right? Yeah. And unfortunately, that's something that I'm sure so many of us would just be like, oh, yeah, I've got everything together. This is everything. <laughs> but that one little thing yeah. kept it from moving along. Um, all right. Uh, we also got another letter from one of our listeners, and I love this one. He sent us a list of all of the biggest expenses that hit you in retirement that no one talks about. So we're going to talk about it. So this was his list that he retired, and these were the things that he was shocked about. Okay. Uh, first of all, investment taxes, which we already talked about. Yeah, that can kill you on a good year. Um Debt, any sort of debt, going into your retirement with debt is a big no-no because as we all know, debt just keeps snowballing. And if you're on a fixed income, it's really hard to like bring it down. So if you haven't retired already, try to get rid of your debt before you do. Um, another th big expense that he mentioned was unexpected emergencies, which we've been talking about. Right. Uh, you never know, right? There could be a health dental i mean all of a sudden i was with, out with a friend who's like we're eating lunch and all of a sudden he's like i just lost part of my tooth <laughs> well let's look at florida right now right yeah that would right? be an unexpected event exactly That's massive, where you in in a in a moment in one day you have nothing left right or you have you know everything except the things that you really need and how are you going to get the money to you know again Back to those plans that we need to have those plans. Another thing that, you know, so many of us gay men are pet owners. We love our pets. Things can happen to our pets as well, especially as we're aging. So are they. And so many things can happen to them and they become our children and we will do whatever we can for them. But it gets really, really expensive. Yeah. A good uh, friend of mine just because his dog was having an issue. Um, over three thousand dollars for a vet bill. Yeah, wow. One shot. The dog was was in overnight, you know, and it was a three thousand wow. dollar bill. And yet, those of us who have pets, we get it. We will pay whatever we need to do for those guys. You, you know? have pet insurance? No, we no. don't. Um, it's funny. We had a really sickly animal. Uh, who cost us a lot of money. And then we thought, okay, the next animal we get, uh, 
we're going to get pet insurance. So we got it. That freaking guy was so healthy. <laughs> Nothing ever happened to him. <laughs> it's like, can't you even get a cold for God's sakes? I paid for this. A hairball, something. Let me take but it again. To that goes back to that very first quote we, we uh, read. You know, you just never know. Yeah. You don't know what's going to happen. Um, also, back to this guy's list of big, biggest expenses, transportation. Cars are expensive if you need to have them. If you don't, Ubers get expensive if you're using them every day. As you mentioned, your registration was a huge new bill. It's always going to be something. And the biggest thing he said is, and you also mentioned this, Michael, is the food and constant price increase. Yeah. And again, this, you know, this last decade has been really unusual if you look back at the span of our lifetime where you, you, you know things are going to go up a little bit every year. You just you plan yeah. for that. But this last decade has been like bananas um, in regard to just how much. Again, I'm paying probably about 40 percent more now for all of my bills across the board. And, I, you know, I don't live extravagantly. Um, and that's that's a huge hit that you yeah. you couldn't possibly foresee. Right. Well, you know, that's the thing. Even if you think you're prepared, you you just don't know what's going to happen. You know, you need to really get these, all of your plans done, all of your ducks in a row. You've got to be prepared for whatever's going to come. Um, otherwise, like, again, as one of our quotes said, you know, I'm a couple checks away from living on the street. So you never know, right? No. So, all right, big question though now. <sighs> What can we do? Well, what I'm going to do is when we're finished, I'm going to go take a couple of Advil. <laughs> <laughs> I have such a headache now. Um, but I'm kidding, obviously. Um, you know, baby steps. I'm going to start to put together a list of goals and just, you know, one by one, work my way through them and hopefully be in a better situation two years from now than I am now. And that's all we could do. Exactly. Um, you know, don't beat yourself up. Well, I think for Lord knows we're good at it. Really good at that. But I think with everything that we've ever discussed, the very first step is the acknowledgement right. that there's an issue or there's a problem or something, right? So we just have to acknowledge like, yeah, all right, wherever I am, whether I'm really, really prepared or I'm missing one of my plans or I haven't even done anything yet. I got to start doing something. Yes. So all Take. of you, because you you know you read a, a comment earlier about putting our heads in the sand. Just first step would be get your head out of the sand and yeah. then just have a look around to see what I, you could do. I also think um, because I'm I love researching, I love reading all that stuff. But once you start going down that rabbit hole, it gets crazy, you know. And especially once you Google something. Every feed has yeah. everything about retirement and whatever. And, you know, when I was trying to figure out everything and um, there's the 4% rule, you know, you can live off of 4% of your um, investments every year that should get you through whatever. Um, then there's a thousand dollar per month rule, which you, it starts adding up and like my thousand bucks a month when I'm doing this, chart all of a sudden was like, oh no, but you're actually at 12,000 a month. I'm like, what's going on? Like, there are all these different plans that, that the internet is saying it's right for you. That is where the overwhelming thing starts yeah. coming in for me. So I think that we all need to kind of seek a little help. You know, um, maybe you have a friend that's really good at investments. I know our center, because uh, my husband, I made him do this, but now he actually likes it. He's he's taking a class on retirement, how to kind of flourish in retirement. And he's taking it at the Gay and Lesbian Center. And uh, so I look, I was looking through all their different classes. They've got classes on investments and, uh, you know, retirement and, and being financially whatever for the future. So seek out help like that. Yeah. Um, and again, it's baby steps. Like that's a great move that totally you know, that your husband did just to just to start to explore, you know, is, is, the, is the, the biggest thing that we could do for ourselves just to, and it is going to be overwhelming at times. And if it is overwhelming, shut your phone off, close your computer, whatever you're looking at, take a breath, give it a moment, and then come back to it later. Because that's the right. worst thing you want to do in the midst of, you know, 
financial insecurity is to get overwhelmed and let it get the best of you because then we're not going to move forward. Exactly. And I, I just want to leave or end on this one quote that uh, I wrote down from Kirk Bremer, our financial advisor from Maverick Wealth Group, because uh, I thought this was great. He said, you don't want to manage your retirement through the rearview mirror. You always have to be looking forward. And when he said that to me, I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. You yeah. know, like get rid of shoulda, coulda. And no matter where you are on this highway of life, you got to look out that windshield and not through the rear view mirror. So if we can start today, like, yes, Michael, today, start making those steps. And two years from now, you will be so far ahead of where you are today. Yeah. And maybe you're going to take a little bit of that anxiety of the future off. And God knows that's that's the worst thing. Yeah, to... the stress the stress can be crippling. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys like me, we are on the highway of life, but we're on the shoulder with a flat tire at the moment. <laughs> so, well, you know, it you also. Know, what do we do? We got it, we got to we got to change the tire or call AAA. One but, of those two things, right? I think you said it as well, though you you live a different kind of life than a lot of people, and I think that's how we have to focus in on. What is my view of right. how I want my retirement? Not, you know, you don't want to live my type of a retirement because that would be no. really overwhelming for you. And like, what? You know, um, so we have to like keep keep it planned for each other. You know what I mean? Like, don't compare yourself to anybody else. Don't think like, oh, well, he's got this plan done. I have to do that same thing. It's yeah. so individual. And I think the biggest thing is, I, I think we're all better off than we actually think we are because we are looking at the neighbor, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm going to disagree with you because I am definitely not better off than I think I am. Um, and you're right. Like we have to individualize this and yeah. make it personal because, you know, you have a lot of moving parts in your financial world. You guys right. have a a house, you have a lot of maintenance that's required, you have all this other stuff. Me, I like to live simply. So you're right, for me to have a financial plan that matches yours would be absurd because right. I like simplicity. Yeah, I, like, I mean, I like to live a quiet sort of financial life. I've never been into, I don't need a new car every year. I don't need a gigantic house. That's just not me. But I still got to figure out what works for me. Right. Yeah. And that, that's the thing. That's what we have to do is look for ourselves um, and not how someone else is doing it. Uh, yeah, it's a lot. It is a lot. And as we always say, guys, we're just starting these conversations. We want you to also continue them. You know, where are you in this world? Are you okay? Should you be talking to somebody else? I think one of the big things that we love is hearing from all of you guys. And we would like to hear, where are you on this? Are you ready? Are you missing one of your plans? Or give us some advice. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. send like, us some of your, some of some, you know, your yeah. solutions to issues that you've had. Um, and let, and let us know how it's working for you. So Michael, tell us where can they? You guys can reach us across social media at, the moniker, no two gays about it. Just remember, it's the number two, not the word two. You can find us on YouTube as well. We're on TikTok. And again, anywhere you, on social media that you are, we are. And uh, reach out to us. We want to hear from you. Also, if you're, if you're watching us on YouTube, as Michael said, make sure you hit like and subscribe and that little bell. But also leave us the comment there. And we love to read the comments and we love watching you guys comment to each other. So that's that's like the best part. So keep that going as well. And one other way you guys could become part of the conversation and also help us keep the show going because we love doing this um, is to check out our Patreon. Um, pop over there. Give us a look. There are different tiers that you could join us at or join us at a free member if you are one of those people who right now can't financially afford it. Um, we would greatly appreciate it. Have a look, find something that fits for you and you'll get access to bonus content like Savage Side Eye, Happy Gay Moment, No, no Two Questions About It, um, where we take questions from you guys and 
um, we answer them regardless of what they're about. Um, and uh, yeah, check us out at patreon.com forward slash no two gays about it. And we also want to send a very special shout out to our guys over there who are supporting us at the executive producer role. We greatly appreciate it. And um, we just want to give you an individual shout out every month, um, every week. <laughs> um, and let's start with Kurt Bremer, who, um, you know, gave us all of the ideas for the show that we just did. And then we have Jason Cruz, Ted Zalewski, John Bonasante, and Lauren Javier. Thank you guys for the trust you put in us. It's greatly appreciated. Totally appreciated. We appreciate all of you out there who watch and listen and comment and let us know all the important things that you want us to talk about. Thank you very much. All right, Michael, I think this was great. Let's all get a little bit more prepared for our financial future as overwhelming and scary as it can be. Right. <sighs> all right. And my first step is that Advil bottle. Okay, good for you. All right. Until next time, Michael. Until next time, Tom. Thank you. And thank you guys for listening. Thanks. This episode was sponsored by Kirk Bremer, AIF, with Maverick Wealth Group. Phone number is 720-688-3844. Their website is www.maverickwealthgroup.com. And that's Maverick with a K, M-A-V-E-R-I-C-K, wealthgroup.com. Their address is 123 G Street, Suite 206, Salida, Colorado, 81201. Securities offered through Parkland Securities, LLC. Member, F-I-N-R-A, S-I-P-C. Investment advisory services offered through SPC, a registered investment advisor. Maverick Wealth Group is independent of Parkland Securities, LLC, and SPC.